Hi, my name is Sina Javan Koshtel. I am a geomechanics specialist at Rock Science. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about numerical methods for slope stability analysis of open pit mines. In this presentation, I'm going to start with an introduction, then I'm going to talk about limit equilibrium method of analysis, finite element method of analysis, and uh, one example at the end. There are two common methods used for the slope stability analysis of open pit mines. Limit equilibrium method, which uses the method of slices to calculate factor of safety. And the finite element method, which uses the shear strength reduction method to find the strength reduction factor, which is similar to the factor of safety. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about these two methods. And mostly I'm going to focus on the finite element method, uh, which is a more rigorous method to calculate factor of safety. Let's start with the limit equilibrium method of analysis. Limit equilibrium method of analysis or a method of slices in 2D uses the slices in 2D or columns in 3D to find the factor of safety. As you can see in this figure, we have a couple of slices. One thing that you should start the limit equilibrium with is assuming a failure surface. After assuming the failure surface, you're going to divide the failure surface into different slices. And when you define different slices, you have interest slice forces, the weight of each slice, shear and normal stresses at the bottom of each slice. And you have a lot of known parameters. And then using these slices, you calculate factor of safety. The same in 3D, it's going to be method of columns, exactly the same. We only have one more dimension for our slices. The reason that we use the method of slices is instead of solving a nonlinear function for factor of safety at once, we solve it numerically using a simpler approach by dividing the critical slip surface into different slices. There are fundamental concepts in the limit equilibrium analysis. First of all, all points along the slip surface are on the verge of failure, which means that all driving forces are equal to the resisting forces and factor of safety is equal to 1. If the uh, driving forces are greater than the resisting forces, then the factor of safety is going to be less than 1. And if the driving forces are less than resisting forces, then factor of safety is going to be greater than 1. The limiting equilibrium concept is a perfect equilibrium between forces driving failure and those resisting failure. This is the basic concept. There are two steps for calculating factor of safety in the limit equilibrium analysis. First, we compute the shear strength required along the potential failure surface that we assume to maintain stability. And then we compare the required shear strength to available shear strength, which is obtained based on the shear strength criteria of the materials. For example, you can see here, this part is the Mohr Coulomb equation, which is a well-known equation to calculate a uh, shear strength. So we have the required shear strength, Mohr Coulomb divided by a factor. So a required has to be equal to the available one divided by a factor of uh, safety. This is the basic concept for the limit equilibrium analysis. Now let's go to the finite element analysis and see what are the differences. The basic idea of finite element analysis is building complicated objects from simple interconnected blocks or elements. These interconnected blocks or elements are called finite element mesh, which probably you know. So there are different steps in the finite element analysis. First, we divide the structure into a small interconnected elements. First of all, Every element has its own displacement function. Also, every element is linked to some other elements through common nodes. And then elements that they are connected in those nodes after deformation, they have to stay connected, which is called the compatibility condition. And based on the stress strain properties of material, behavior of system of nodes can be determined in the finite element analysis. 
Finite element mesh, which is one of the most important parts of modeling using finite element analysis. The left figure is showing the mesh in 2D and the right one is the 3D mesh. There are different types of mesh for slope stability, for underground mining. I'm not going to talk about those uh, in these presentations. Let's look at the limited equilibrium and finite element pros and cons. For limited equilibrium, the pros, this is the most common slope stability analysis method. Practitioners have an extensive experience with this method. It has a relatively simple formulation. You can do it even in Excel. It's very fast and because it's fast, it's useful for evaluating sensitivity of failure to input parameters and it requires minimal material input parameters as well. Cons, as I mentioned before, the failure mechanism and mode of failure is assumed before solving the problem. Arbitrary assumptions to ensure a static determinacy has to be defined. This method neglects stress strain behavior and also does not provide information on deformation. And also you cannot model excavation using the limit equilibrium method. Finite element method of analysis, uh, on the other hand, pros does not assume any failure mechanism, accounts for various material stress strain behavior, provides information on deformation at working stress level, and reveals progress and development of the failure mechanism. Cons computational speed or time can be an issue it can take a long time to compute a model requires more material input parameters because it can model any type of stress strain material requires more numerical modeling expertise compared to limit equilibrium as i said limit equilibrium has simple formulation but a finite element is more rigorous and more advanced Definition of instability of solution and convergence might be an issue because sometimes you may have non-convergence as a result of numerical instability compared to the actual physical instability. Sensitivity analysis in this method is difficult because it takes some quite time to compute. However, something that is the purpose of actually this presentation is this concept from Bishop, which says the factor of safety is defined as the ratio of the available shear strength of the soil to that required to maintain equilibrium. So the S parameter is the original shear strength divided by a factor, we call it shear strength uh, reduction factor. So this concept, I showed this in the earlier slides. So it means that the concept of shear strength reduction method to calculate factor of safety in a slope stability analysis using finite element is the same as limit equilibrium. The difference is you divide the slip surface into mesh different elements and then do the stress strain analysis. And limit equilibrium is a different approach, but the concept, the basic concept is the same. The way that the shear strength reduction factor is applied is shown in this slide. If we look at the well-known Mohr Coulomb equation, you can see that this is the original shear strength and the blue line is the original shear envelope. And this equation is the reduced or factor Mohr Coulomb equation. And it's shown here with the red line, which means that we reduce the shear strength, the original shear strength, with a factor to reach the reduced Morcolum shear strength. And this factor is called shear strength reduction factor. The procedure of doing a slow stability using shear strength reduction method in the finite element analysis is, first of all, as I showed, we reduce the shear strength with a factor. Then we compute the finite element model if the analysis fails and does not converge to a solution, we reduce the SRF factor and recompute. If it converts, we increase the SRF factor and again recompute. We're going to reach at the point that if we increase the factor a little bit, engine does not converge. And that's called SRF that initiates the failure and it's going to be our factor of safety. 
as I showed, we need the original shear strength. So that's called our failure criteria in the finite element analysis. I showed you the more Coulomb in different commercial software. Some of these names might be different. This is from uh, RS2 and RS3, which is rock science software. We have more Coulomb, generalized Suk Brown, Barton Bandis, several uh, different uh, methods for the isotropic cases. And also we have isotropic cases as well. We have jointed more Coulomb, jointed generalized Suk Brown, isotropic linear Snowden and generalized isotropic. Let's look at a couple of them. This is the shear normal strength criteria. Allows you to define an arbitrary shear normal function to define a nonlinear Mohr Coulomb strength envelope for a material. So if you have the relationship between shear stress and normal stress, you can define your own nonlinear Mohr Coulomb criteria. These data they can come from direct shear tests or other types of tests as well. For the isotropic case, for example, this one is the generalized isotropic. You are allowed to create a composite strength model in which you can assign any strength model to any orientation in 2D or 3D. To show the orientation in 3D, you can use the stereonate as well. So basically you define the rock mass and then you can define the bedding planes and joints in your rock mass using this function. Sometimes similar to this figure, you have an isotropic model, these red dots, that you can define it with a surface and you can use our isotropic linear criteria. In this case, in this model, this is an open pit, 2D open pit model. We found the factor of safety using the finite element, which is 1.11, and this is the critical slip surface. The red line is the critical slip surface corresponding to the limit equilibrium method. And you can see that we got exactly the same answer, factor of safety of 1.11 using the GLE method. Sometimes you have more complicated models with more isotropic surfaces and models. Similar to this one, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 isotropic surfaces. And you can look at the results. This is the finite element analysis results. And on top of it, we have the limit equilibrium results, both with a factor of safety of about 1.76 and 9. Let's look at our example. Our example is a 3D open pit mine example. I'm going to show you how to create the model and what are the steps. The basic steps are you have to import surfaces like pit surface and you have to create your own final 3D geometry. If you have any anisotropic material, you have to define your anisotropic criteria and then create your model and anisotropic surface in your model. Then you have to mesh and find your mesh if it's required. You have to use restraints and at the end compute and interpret. Let's start with the initial geometry. This is a very large open pit in Australia. You can see that the initial model doesn't have any material layer, so you have to import different surfaces to create your 3D geometry. And sometimes when your model is too large or you are interested in just a specific region of this model, you can define a box like this and cut the rest of your model. After defining your initial uh, geometry you can define your material properties we have more coulomb material properties in this model that you define the cohesion friction angle and other parameters as i mentioned you may have anisotropic cases so we had one anisotropic material that we use this surface to define this uh, anisotropic material so to define the isotropic material using a surface option, you have to define a base material first, which is your rock mass, and you have to define your bedding material and then assign these parameters to your surface that I showed in the previous slide. To define the bedding and base, we use the shear normal function and we had a couple of direct shear tests and we used those data to define our shear normal function. 
After defining this, and you can see we have different layers of material, we meshed our model. If you look at this region, you can see that the mesh is a little bit finer because we ran this model using limit equilibrium first and we found that this region is the critical region and then we refine the mesh for that region. This is one of the tricks that people do when they do the finite element analysis. If you know the failure region in advance or you can guess it, you can refine the mesh to get a better answer for that region. You have to use restraints in the finite element analysis. We use the fixed restraint for the sides and the bottom of the model, but the top for the slope stability has to be free because you have to let the model to fail. These are the results. In finite element analysis, you can show the failure region using two parameters. One is the shear strain, and the other one is the total displacement. Maximum shear strain means failure. You have the highest strain in your material. You can see that this is happening in this region. And also the maximum displacement of the model happens at the location of failure, similar to this one. A lot of practitioners are more comfortable with 2D results. So you can have 2D cut sections in the 3D model and look at the failure region. This is your failure in the model and finally you can compare the results of a 3d limit equilibrium analysis to the 3 defined element analysis and as explained before if you use a proper search method advanced search method in the limit equilibrium analysis you can get exactly the same failure mechanism and factor of safety as your finite element analysis to conclude Finite element and limit equilibrium method are the most common slope stability methods. Limit equilibrium is faster and requires fewer input parameters compared to finite element. However, finite element a method is more robust and the failure is not defined in advance. At the end, SSR, which is shear strength reduction method in finite element analysis and limit equilibrium method to calculate factor of safety are both based on the reducing the shear strength to reach an equilibrium in the model and they should give the same factor of safety. Thank you.